Hey folks, this is St. Enix. We're going to be doing a little kind of tutorial slash guide. Just a little info on how I was able to splice a standard power supply into a Dell all-in-one 18-pin connector. Okay, so let's just jump right in. This right here is a light-on 300 watt power supply probably came out of an HP or a Dell or a compact just some junky generic power supply this is a Dell all-in-one a 2010 um, 20 point 20 point one inch widescreen all-in-one Dell desktop system um, let me go ahead and pull some things here so I can show you pull the power Turn it on, turned it on so it sucked all the power out of the capacitors. One second, folks. Sorry about that. Okay, anyway. Um, so now we're going to go on to this. This, if I can get it out, is your standard Dell 18 pin all in one connector. As you can see, you got a bunch of wires, all different colors. All for different things, including two that don't really get wired into a standard power supply because they're proprietary, and I'll explain that here in a minute. First, I'm going to kind of give you a rundown. The fact of the matter is, power supplies, like any other electronic device, have to have safety regulations and certain code uh, adherence, which means all these wires here have to be a certain color, just like any other electrical thing receptacles light switches commercial or residential electronics and uh and electrical wiring has to be color coded for safety reasons um so that you know that way if somebody works on it after you do they don't you know get confused and touch the wrong wire and kill themselves so we're gonna break it down pretty easily pretty quickly i'm gonna try to go through it as fast as i can make this a short video but give you guys as much information as possible. Standard first thing. See all these yellow wires here? Yellow is always 12 volt. Okay? Yellow is always 12. Black is always ground. Blue is like negative 12 volt for... It's usually for the CPU fan. Um, gray and green are both for the power supply. Right here, gray and green. Um, green... This one right here is for power supply on. This is what actually sends a signal to the power supply and says, hey, douchebag over here pressed a button, so you need to give us some juice so we can turn this thing on. Gray is a load wire, power supply OK wire that just, it's a test load basically, and, and makes sure that the power supply can provide the power that the CPU needs, computer itself needs. Um, purple is 5 volt SB, which I just kind of, always equated it to running USB, but I'm probably wrong on that one. Like I said, I taught myself. I never went to school for any of this shit. I've been turning apart computers since I was like 12, and I'm 30 now, so I've just learned a lot of stuff over the years. Um, so that's pretty much basically all of this All of this here. It all wires into a standard power supply. Just match the wires up. Color code everything. If you can look up here where I've got... I don't have it all soldered and, and finalized yet because I haven't gotten that far. Um, I got kind of focused on the fallout shelter thing, and I, I let this go by the wayside. But if you look up here, all these wires are connected to the exact same color wires. There's no confusion there. There's no, it, you don't have to, it, there's not a real guide to it because it's just match up colors. Match the colors and make sure they, they're, they're the same. That's it. <laughs> these two ones are weird. The white one and the brown one are for fan fan header power and for sensor for the fan these ones not being wired in cause a beep error code when it boots and an odd failure and it just says press f1 to resume it doesn't actually harm it i have noticed that the fan sometimes ramps up back and forth um i haven't tried to go in and set it manually or anything so i don't know but they're not required. 
it runs. I've used this thing for a couple weeks actually while I was waiting for the new system parts to come in and it never gave me a problem. If you just let it go into sleep mode, you don't have to actually boot it back up. You'll bypass that and you won't have to worry about it. Um, I actually plugged this white wire into an orange. Orange is 3.3 and red is 5. 5 volt. Okay. When I first put, put this together, I wasn't sure. So I just plugged this white one because it seemed like the one that was most likely a power for something. The brown one, honestly, I think is a sensor. But the white one seemed like it was power for some kind of fan controlled by this brown sensor wire. So I plugged it into a 3.3 volt just to see what would happen. What happened was this little power connector here, right on the other side, right by this little purple capacitor, like, I don't know, third, third row in, a little wisp of white smoke came up off the board. It was still, it was still booting while it was doing that, <clears throat> and it still turned on. I, I unplugged it, turned it all off and everything, pulled the white wire off of the 3.3, but fuck, it still worked. I plugged it right back in afterward, and it booted right up. So... I'm not sure if that ODD thing might not show up for you guys. If you don't connect that white wire, maybe it, maybe it won't. But my first act was to connect this white wire, which caused something to burn out here. Honestly, it still works. I will plug it in and sh or I'll plug it all back in and show you that it turns on here in just a second. But I just wanted to kind of explain how to do this to you guys because some people on Twitter were asking me about it. And yeah, I don't do Twitter much and I don't do Facebook much. And so I kind of don't check them as much as I should. But, uh, so anyway, we've got this. I know I didn't have to wire any of these three or five volt 3.3s or the fives because this power connector literally does not have them. Standard power supplies do, but this one doesn't. Um, this 18 pin at least. Uh, so yeah, basically it's all about color coding. Just color code your wires, strip the casings off of them, twist them together, drop a couple of dots of solder on them, throw a heat heat shrink wrap on it, you know. To finalize it and get it all permanent but uh <clears throat> i wouldn't recommend going too much higher than like a 30 you know like a 50 percent increase i mean granted the original was a 200 watt this is a 300 it's never caused me any problems but if you try to splice in like a 450 or so, i don't know i don't know what'll happen all i know is what i've done and what's worked so i just try to keep it close to 200 if you've got an old 280 watt out of a dell or a you know, you can you can buy a cheap one on eBay for a few bucks as opposed to the two hundred dollars it's gonna cost you to replace this freaking power supply in this thing. I shit you not, they're between like 185 and 200 and some odd dollars for this little power supply in here. And there's only a few of them on eBay in the first place. They burn out a lot. Um <clears throat> yeah, let's go ahead and like plug it in and show you how it runs and works. We're just gonna pop this cable in there like so um these obviously don't need to be connected to brown and white and watch your grounds some of these power supplies are going to have more grounds than you need which means you can use these 3.3s or these 5 volts and w wire in like a phone charger or an led light strip or there's all kinds of stuff on instructables about how to turn power supplies into a bench power supply. So go ahead and check that out. I might do a video at some point about how to make a bench supply out of an old PSU, but uh, we're not gonna do that for this video because it's just gonna add time. It's just gonna take time. So <clears throat> we're just gonna get right into it. I'm gonna stand this thing up and make sure none of the wires are touching anything they shouldn't be because they are some loose wires back there. <laughs> Like I said, it's supposed to be finalized and finished and done better, but I had, just haven't had the time to do it. So, where's my power button? Oh, it's all the way over there. We're going to go ahead and turn this thing on. I'm trying to hold it up with one hand and hold the phone with the other. So, Oh, snap, son. Look at that. As you can see, it is plugged in here. And it is plugged in back here. You've even got your power supply or your uh, motherboard power light LED right there going the fans are running uh, you can't really see it on the video but the fan is running um I've got two open ground wires just kind of hanging there I did used to 
twist them up on the casing, you know, through screw holes and stuff on the casing. Um, I've personally shorted this thing three times. I burned out a two gig stick of RAM accidentally, just trying to move it around while it was still plugged in, being stupid and tired, like four o'clock in the morning. But as you can see, look, she boots. There's a couple of boot error beeps, which I think is this ODD detect failure, press F1 to resume. Also, I don't have a keyboard. Even though it says there's a keyboard, mouse, and hub plugged in, I don't have anything else plugged into this, so that might be one of the error beeps as well. Um, she boots just fine, goes straight into Windows. That's, that's about it, folks. I mean, like, I can't really tell you much else. Like I said, just color code your wires. Purple to purple, yellow to yellow, black to black. You know what I'm saying? Be careful about that. And don't splice any that you're not going to use. I accidentally spliced all my grounds and I had two extra and you know, yeah. So just don't splice the, the orange or the red. Don't even cut off the ends of the casings and stuff. If you don't have to cap them off, do whatever you got to do to protect it. But yeah, there she is all plugged in power and booted. I mean, not into Windows. There's no hard drive plugged into this thing, but uh, yeah. These things actually also, I know for a fact that they will handle up to the Core 2 Quad 2.66. I, 80, is it the, six, is it the Q6600, I think? Um, I don't know about much higher than that. Uh, but yeah, you can still use this PC. Media Center system, you know, even if your power supply burns out, get you a cheap one on eBay for like 10 bucks. 250, 280, 300. I wouldn't go much higher than that, just on the safe side. Plus, it's going to be cheaper. You don't need it. The original one was 200. This one's 300. Uh, I can't. I can't get it focused in there. That's 300. So, I mean, there's more power than this thing needs. But I'm going to try. I'm not going to make this video any longer. This has been St. Inix, uh, just kind of giving some people the information on how to do this themselves. I've had some people asking me. So, Real Geeks Don't Need a Squad, episode two. Thanks, folks. Like and share if this worked for you. If, if, uh, or if you want to see more tech hacking and, and crazy interesting things. Thanks, folks. I appreciate all your support.